Notice these bison as they travel this road. Do you think that there's a mean or an average size for these bison? Perhaps there's a standard deviation as well. Welcome to Lecture 9. Raw data require interpretation. Making data tell a story brought to you by the dog. Here we have a population of penguins scattered upon a rock. Out of this population, we might take a sample. We might select part of them. Look at the penguins. Do you assume that there is an average height? Maybe there's an average weight. We might have an average bill length. We might have an average number of square inches of black color upon these penguins. Life is filled with different sorts of statistics. We have a population here. We could select a sample. If we selected a random sample, that would mean that we would pick a penguin out with every penguin having an equal possibility of being selected. If we have all of these things like mean height, mean weight, and so forth, do we not also have standard deviations that would accompany those? Life is actually filled with statistics. What if I walked up to you and just looked you in the eye and said 150? Wouldn't that be troublesome? What does it mean? Go back again. If we know that the mean of this thing is 100 and the standard deviation is 20, then we've got some understanding of what's going on. Suddenly, we notice that this little red line appears. We see the mean, don't we? And we know that we're dealing with a population because we're using the Greek letter mu, which denotes to us the mean of a population. So the mean of this population distribution is 100. Oh, isn't that marvelous? Look at that little standard deviation hopped up there. There's sigma. Our standard deviation is 20. Isn't that beautiful? Don't, you didn't know the old dog was that slick, did you? Just keep watching. Suddenly, now we have six of those little standard deviations of size 20 in this graph. If we were to go to the mean of 100 and we drop one standard deviation below, we're at 80. We drop another standard deviation below and we're at 60. We drop another standard deviation at below and we're 40. You see that there are three standard deviations uh, between the number 40 and 100. So we would say that 40 lies three standard deviations below the mean. Look to the right. We go from 100 to 120. There's one standard deviation. From 140, 120 to 140, there's another standard deviation. And from 140 to 160, there's another. We could say that 160 lies three standard deviations above the mean. This is so clever. Now go back to your original data point. Your original data point was 150. Where does it lie in this graph? Somebody walked up and said 150. Maybe they're talking about jumping on manhole covers and they caught 150 nerves in there. Now on an IQ test, when we say 150, if the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 20, then 150 is definitely well ahead of the pack. I really struggled with this, by the way, guys, because when I taught public school, every kid that I ever failed in algebra had 160 IQ, according to their mother. Of course, uh, they were, there's IQ and there's functional IQ. Functional IQ is your innate IQ minus your obnoxious quotient. So if you have a functional, you have an innate IQ of 160 and an obnoxious quotient of 100, then you're functioning at an IQ of 60. Isn't that cool? Now look at this. See our data point? X is 150. What can we say about that now in regard to the mean being 100 and the standard deviation being 20? You got it. This little data point has a, has a standard deviation of 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. Didn't that sound nerdy? 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. Look at 40 just a minute and see if you can make a guess. Okay, how many standard deviations is it below the mean? Right. 40 is three standard deviations below the mean. You can count them. 60 is two standard deviations. 80 is one standard deviation. Now, give us a little bit of thought suddenly. You see how knowing the mean and knowing the standard deviation gives relevance to a raw data point? Yes, you're catching on. And you thought you couldn't do statistics. My God, right now you're talking about 
being so many standard deviations above the mean and so many standard deviations below the mean, and it's exciting to begin to do that. The problem is that now that you know this, the only other people you can tell about it are nerds because they're the only ones that understand you. If you walk up to somebody and say, hey, you look to be two standard deviations below the mean, they're going to slap you. They don't know what you said. You just have to enjoy being a nerd. Kind of makes you want to go out and take a bath, doesn't it? We'll move to the next point.